Well, today my conversation is with Bertha McNeil. She's an educator, community leader, a piano teacher, and member of the Girls Motown Group of Valva Lats. Thank you so much for talking with me here today. Thank you. So, so how does being a Valva Lat help you teach your students? After we've made their background when they first start taking piano lessons, and then I'll tell a little bit about myself. But then when I mentioned that I sing for Motown or used to sing for Motown, <laughs> made a record kind of thing, right away that whole thing is like, boy, not only does she know about classical musicians, you know, but she's in that other area of, of you know, some of the pop, right? So I, I, I have to just say that it kind of puts you in a cool, <laughs> like, it's yeah. kind of cool there. And you know, you're in the Douglas neighborhood, right? So how important is the location? You know, it's, it's very important. As a matter of fact, one of my students lives right across the street. She can just walk right over yeah. to her music lesson. It makes a very good for another reason. We want to teach students that are what we call underserved or uh, maybe didn't have a chance or don't have a chance to uh, be exposed to the greater Kalamazoo uh, of arts. And we're, we're right there in their community. Can I have you be teacher for a minute? And I'm gonna be student and you show Miss Bertha some finger exercises for before before we play the piano. Okay, there's one. Okay, thank you. Good. Yeah, that's a stretch. Okay, all right, very nice. Woo, yeah, thank you for that. And you've developed some pretty important partnerships over the years. And can you talk about that? Some of those that we've done are the Gilmore Piano Festival, yeah. which uh, includes the Gilmore Piano Keys Fest. And we were so happy this year that we had three piano students to enter the Gilmore's Piano Fest. And who did they have for their uh, clinician? None other than Ed Callahan. And also the Gilmore uh, Piano Festival itself. We actually, uh, you know, take kids on a bus to some of those performances. Wow. Kate Esso Orchestra, we have a string quartet and they have played in the lobby for the, the youth. Uh, that Black Arts and Cultural Center, Suzuki, all of those organizations that some of our students might not have access to. This is part of our goal at the uh, Helen L. Fox. When did you first start playing piano? And, and when, what, how did you start playing? When did the bug hit me? Yeah, and it, 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 it hit, I'll tell you. When I f first fell in love with music, it was in the second grade. Uh, and the teacher would have us uh, give us all little rhythm instruments, you know, the little tambourine and the little bell and the triangle. She gave me a triangle and we would march around the room and play our instruments and she put on a record player. Maybe some people might not know what a record player is, but it had the needle and the yeah. arm and she right. put that on. And uh, I'll tell you, it was when I first was hit that triangle it's a true story. It, and heard the sound, the team. It was love at first team. Wow. Something, it made me happy. And that mm. was, yeah, that's how I first fell in love with music. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we are going to hear the song called Frogs on Logs, played by Christopher Moore. Four times that low note. All right. 
mean, you talked about recitals. Recitals were always terrifying for me. But why are recitals important? Oh, and they are important. They really are important. Uh, I think one of the main ones is memories. And I'm sure you have memories of, yeah. of recitals. You can't carry that with you forever and ever, right. uh, especially when you do well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. right. And, and and the other part, too, of that is uh, it, it, it teaches us, uh, us and students to uh, conquer nerves. If you never came across that type of thing where you had to jump over the, I call it the nerve fence or whatever it is, you, you'll never know, you know, if you could have done it or not. Um, tell me what the recitals pre-COVID looked like. Before, we we had probably, let me see, probably two or three. And, and they were wonderful. You know, the kids get a chance to dress up a little bit and, 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 and play in front of uh, mom, dad, aunts, uncles, the family, and also get a chance to see other students and hear other students. And especially if the other students are advanced, it's the kind of thing I want to be able to, and I know I, I felt that way too. I, I want to be able to practice and practice so I can play like Johnny or Susie. Oh. Ooh. your own chords I am so proud of you and you know what that is very challenging to play uh, the chord and then play the melody like you did I am very very proud of you you know Bertha you mentioned it was love at first ting when you were playing the triangle do you ever see that sort of thing with your own students you know, you do uh, every now and then, it's like a light bulb or something that comes on in their head. Uh, there was this one student uh, that took piano for probably, well, I would say maybe about maybe six months. He told me, I'm going to start a music group, a jazz music group. And he's going to be the piano player and he's going to get two or three other students and he's in um, high school. And so, I mean, that was one of those moments like, whoa, he's taking it farther. He's jumping out of the box to, to do really good that uh, taking piano lessons was a spark right there. Yeah, that will last a lifetime for him. Listen, I got to thank you so much, Bertha, for talking to me. It's Bertha Barbie yes. McNeil, educator, communicator, uh, community leader, uh, musician, you name it. Thank and you. I thank you so much for your time today. It's always so much fun to and talk to you. it's fun to tell an L Gospel Fox. Uh, it's a wonderful organization. So if you want to take piano lessons, violin lessons out there, please, please join us. One, two, ready, play.
Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation, helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo.